Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerNews.com. I want to thank you for being here with me today. If you're enjoying these videos on Poker News, click like, click subscribe, and share them with your friends. That will go a long way to helping me and Poker News. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be reviewing a few hands that one of my students played in a WPT 500. This was played online, I believe. So we are um, playing against players who are somewhat unknown. Uh, World Poker Tour did a, or is currently doing a structure in a lot of their tournaments where you can play day one online if you feel like it, and then you get in the money, and then you go and play day two live. Party Poker is also doing the same thing, and I think it's a pretty cool idea. It's a great way to let people who may not otherwise travel somewhere to play, play online, get in the money, and then it's kind of worth it to get up and travel, right? So, in this scenario, we are playing 100 big blinds deep, and everyone folds around to the small blind who raises to 2.7 big blinds. And I think right off the bat, this is a pretty big mistake by the opponent, because you're giving the big blind excellent pot odds to call. Notice here that our hero has to put in 1.7 big blinds to win a pot that's going to go up to 6.4 big blinds, right? So we only need to realize 20-something percent equity. And from in position, you're going to realize 20-something percent equity with pretty much everything. Now, I do recognize that when you're playing against some opponents, they will just drastically overfold in the big blinds. So if you're a small blind, they're just going to fold all sorts of stuff like 9-6 offsuit or king-3 offsuit, thinking, oh, it's not a good hand, I guess I have to fold. But if your opponents are sticking around adequately, raising small out of position is just really not what you want to be doing. You'd much rather develop a very... Um, well, it depends on your opponent's strategy, but likely a polarized raising range with a very, very wide limping range. Because whenever you limp from the small blind, you're getting great odds, right? You're getting four to one pot odds immediately, and then if you get raised, you can still stick around with a lot of hands. So anyway, opponent raises. Um, if the opponent is going to raise here, I would much prefer a raise to like four big blinds or 3.5 big blinds. But anyway, he raises small. And now with ace five offsuit, our hero has a pretty easy call. Um, he could certainly three bet. I don't think it's... Insane to 3-bet the ace-x offsuit type hands, essentially using the blocker as a bluff. But I typically just call in this scenario. When you're getting great odds, you don't really want to do anything to mess that up. Because if we do 4-bet, or 3-bet, our opponent could 4-bet, and then we have to fold. And we don't really want to fold out the ace. So flop comes ace-queen-10, and the opponent bets. This is a situation where we have a very, very easy call. Um, some people look at top pair in this scenario and think, oh, top pair, this is great. I probably have the best hand. And I want to make sure I don't get outdrawn by a random king or a random jack or a flush draw or a hand like queen six, right? But the problem with raising is that if we do raise, what is going to continue? Well, certainly all better hands are going to continue, right? Any, any ace is going to call, which we lose to most of those. Um, two pair, straights, sets are obviously going to call. If the opponent does happen to have a worse hand, like a queen, it's usually going to be a queen with a gut shot that has plenty of equity. Same thing with a 10, right? And if our opponent has a flush draw, they're not going to fold to a raise as well. So raising doesn't really make any of the decently strong hands fold. But what it does make fold are hands that are in pretty bad shape, like 8-7 of diamonds, right? If your opponent has 8-7 of diamonds, you really want to keep them in the pot because they're drawing very near dead. Every once in a while, they're going to get there and outdraw you. But for the most part, in this scenario, when you raise, you're going to get called by all the hands that beat you, plus a few worse hands. But when you call, you keep your opponent in the pot with their entire range. And if your opponent is generally loose, generally aggressive, generally splashy, that's great because they're just going to continue bluffing. Also, whenever you do happen to be against a better hand, like, well, two pair or top pair with a better kicker, you don't really want to make the pot bigger because now we are drawing thin. And this comes up very frequently, where you're either way ahead or way behind the opponent, for the most part. And in that scenario, you typically just want to call. All right, turns to seven of clubs, and the opponent checks. And now, this is an interesting scenario where I do think betting is fine. And the reason I think betting is fine is because now if we can make any hand with a club fold, that's a fine result, right? Because the club's going to get there about 20-ish percent of the time. And if we can just bet... A medium amount like four big blinds and get those hands to fold that's a fine success we do have to be careful in this scenario though that, uh, because we don't want to bet too big to the point that when we do get called we're against almost entirely better made hands now of course we can get called by hand like 
king of clubs with a queen or queen with a jack of clubs, those hands are never going to fold to any bet, and we are extracting value by betting big against those specific hands. But for the most part, I think a bet of about five-ish big blinds is going to be pretty nice because if our opponent does have a better hand, like ace-jack, he's probably not going to raise, right? And if he does have a hand like queen nine with no club, eh, he can still call the five big blind bet and he's putting his money in pretty far behind, right? So this is a great example of a scenario where you don't want to go too big. As you start betting bigger and bigger in this spot, it forces your opponent to play better and better. And you make money when your opponents make mistakes, not whenever they play well. So I like a small bet, and that is what my student does. So nice bet here. If we do get raised, by the way, it's certainly a rough spot, but I think we probably just want to fold. Um, and the reason is because what is really raising here? It's going to be a good club, which has a decent amount of equity because it's going to be a king or a jack most likely. And then we're going to be getting raised by flushes, right? And against flushes, we are drawing dead. So we're either dead or we're ahead, but we have to fade a lot of outs. And in that instance, we just want to get out of the way. Um, you may say, well, wouldn't we bet bigger if we had a good hand? And we, we actually may, right? We are probably using two sizes of this scenario where we're betting bigger with our flushes and our bluffs, and we're betting smaller with mostly a, um, a marginal value range like we have. So you want to make sure that you are well protected in these scenarios. So you may find that against some really strong players who are going to check raise you somewhat aggressively here, uh, you should perhaps not bet this hand and then just use it to call any river bet on a non-club river. Um, so don't think you have to bet here every single time. But I think in general, this is a fine scenario, especially if you don't think you're going to get raised a lot, just to make a small bet with the idea that you are going to extract value from some worse hands and you're going to make some random clubs that have equity fold. So we do bet 4.5 big blinds. The opponent calls, which is great. River's a nine, and now the opponent checks. So, how do you feel about this spot? Well, we have the best hand a pretty good amount of the time. So the question is, should we make a value bet? So what are we trying to get called by? We're trying to get called by a queen or a 10. So do you really think a queen or a 10 will call a bet on this river? And, uh, you know, maybe a small bet. If we bet four or five big blinds, I think we very easily could get called by worse. Um, the problem, though, is that we're going to get raised every once in a while. And we really don't want to get raised here because we do have the best hand. And let's say our opponent did have a random hand like King of Clubs blank. And for some reason they played it this way. Or Jack of Clubs blank. Obviously, it's kind of hard to have a Jack and a blank, right? Unless they raise with, like, Jack 3 offsuit or something. It's not very likely. Because notice here, Jack 9 is a pair. Jack 8 is a straight. Jack 7 is a pair. King Jack's a straight. Queen Jack's a pair, right? So it's kind of hard to have a total blank. So if our opponent does just happen to have one of those... Queen X, or King X or Jack X with the, with one club, um, they may decide to check raise us, but that's probably unlikely, especially since a lot of people just keep betting those on the turn. So the question is, can we get called by worse? And I think it's close. As your opponents play more and more straightforward, this is going to be the case in a lot of small stakes live tournaments or um, small stakes cash games, right? In scenarios like that, I definitely think betting small for value has merit, but when you're playing against players who will sporadically be aggressive and will raise every once in a while, both for bluff and as a value, I think you want to be more inclined to check it behind. And if I was playing this game in a medium stakes or high stakes tournament, I would just check behind every time. Um, because whenever we do bet here, we really do open the door for a lot to go wrong. And we don't want to get raised. So I think I just like checking. We have the best hand a lot, but whenever we bet and get called, it's already kind of marginal. Because for all we know, maybe a queen always folds out or a 10 always folds out to any bet. And um, every once in a while we do get raised and it's quite bad when that happens. So it does go check, check. And this time we lose to the queen seven of diamonds. So rather tough turn. Every once in a while you do get a tough turn where you end up putting in a little bit of money behind. But notice we didn't really lose a whole lot of money. And it's important to make sure that whenever you do have a marginal made hand, that you try to just realize your equity, try to get the showdown while also giving your opponent bad odds with the portion of their range that you want to give bad odds, like the potential flush draws on the turn. Um, something also worth mentioning is that it is important to make sure you think about poker and from the mindset of I'm playing against my opponent's range, not against my opponent's exact hand. Because for example, what a lot of people do is they look at this and say, 
oh man, I should have just raised big on the flop, and then my opponent would have folded and not outdrawn me on the turn, right? But the problem with that is that this is one of the few hands that we would have preferred to raise the flop against, right? And notice that this hand was drawing to five outs. When your opponent's drawing to five outs, let them draw to their five outs. It is okay, because what's gonna happen on most turns is the opponent's gonna miss, they're gonna check, we're gonna value bet, they're gonna call, and then on slightly less bad rivers that don't make random hands like queen nine come in or 10 nine come in, we're gonna be able to get a small value bet in against these hands as well. So don't be results oriented in thinking that, oh, we lost, so we must have done something wrong. And also in the mindset of, what could I have done against this specific hand? Because remember, your opponent does not have this one specific hand. They have their range. And you want to make sure you're playing your hand and your range as well as you can against your opponent's range. So that's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video for Poker News. Let me know on Twitter at Poker News. And if you want more from me, check out my YouTube channel. I have a ton of comments. A ton of comments. Huh. I do have a ton of con comments. I also have a ton of content over at YouTube dot com slash poker coaching so check that out leave comments like it subscribe and i'll talk to you next time